Chapter 12 has a lot of confusing terminology. There were the ligand-gated ion channels and second messenger link receptors found out on the dendrites of a neuron, and the voltage-gated sodium channels found along the axon. At rest, the membrane potential was at the resting potential, or minus 70 millivolts. A ligand-gated ion channel could cause a graded potential, and if that graded potential was large enough, then voltage-gated sodium channels could fire an action potential. There were also a lot of details related to what happens at synapses, including different types of neurotransmitters and neurotransmitter receptors. We also discussed the importance of myelin and how that affects action potential propagation. And be sure to review all of the different types of neuroglia that we covered and the one or two things that they are mainly responsible for in the nervous system. With a nerve injury, there is a chance that, with time, the injury can be repaired. First off, distal to the site of injury, the axon will degenerate. This will lead Schwann cells to de-differentiate and begin releasing growth factors that drive the growth of the axon towards them. As long as the connective tissue of the nerve is still intact, the axon will have only one direction in which to grow, and that is back towards the original target. This may require surgery or a graft. Once the axon has grown back to its original target, the Schwann cells can differentiate back and begin producing myelin, thus repairing the injury. On the other hand, in the central nervous system, a small amount of damage to the spine may damage some axons. These will degenerate distal to the injury, just like in the nerve. However, oligodendrocytes, when they sense damage to the axons that they myelinate, will instead release inflammatory molecules, which not only kill the entire damaged neuron, but also nearby neurons. This can lead to full paralysis. Inhibition of inflammation can help to limit this damage. Ligand-gated ion channels, or second messenger link receptors, are found on the dendrites of neurons. In medicine, if we wish to boost their activity, we frequently will inhibit the removal of neurotransmitters from synapses, rather than using drugs that activate these receptors directly. By using a drug that blocks something that blocks the neurotransmitter, we effectively only increase the neurotransmitter levels at the synapses that were already firing, whereas a drug that mimics a neurotransmitter would activate all synapses that contain that neurotransmitter receptor. In addition to neurotransmitters and drugs that either mimic them or alter their metabolism, neuromodulators were another class of signaling molecule. These do not activate signals directly. As their name implies, they modulate the strength of neurotransmitter signals by altering the number of neurotransmitter receptors, for instance, that are found on the dendrites. If these neurotransmitter receptors are a ligand-gated ion channel that allows sodium into the cell, they are causing a graded potential known as an EPSP, which causes depolarization. There might be other ion channels that allow potassium out of the cell, which is an IPSP, which causes hyperpolarization. Remember, positive ions leaving the cell are the same as negative ions entering the cell. It makes the inside of the cell relatively more negative. Remember that 50 to 80 percent of the cells in the nervous system are actually glia, not neurons. However, we spent most of our time learning about how the neurons functioned. There are voltage-gated sodium channels on the axon hillock and extending all the way down the axon. Opening up one of these channels will allow more sodium in, which should activate the next voltage-gated sodium channel, and so on. Traveling behind this wave of activation are inactivated voltage-gated sodium channels. This wave of inactivation prevents an action potential from bouncing backwards. All action potentials are the same, so to code information, neurons regulate the frequency of action potentials. 
Glia can also fire electrical signals, although their signals are much slower than an action potential. Nevertheless, because they are so numerous, what we see on an fMRI actually represents glial electrical activity, not so much neuronal activity.